Welcome everyone. So in this video, we are going to see how to transfer attachment from one instance to another instance using a combination of e-bonding spoke, which we have seen in first two cases in this article. And if you guys have not seen those two videos, um, check the link in the description where I have shown you how default e-bonding works and then also how you can customize the e-bonding spokes what are the requirements for that and now in this video we are going to see along with creation of the incident from one instance to another instance out of the box attachments are not supported so we have to do something extra and that is what i'm going to show you in this video both when you create the incident and and also another case is when the incident is already e-bonded and someone comes in and adds an attachment how the attachment goes to the next instance it's like a mini integration project, which we have done. I will be also attaching the flow, the actions, uh, everything to the article and uh, which is uh, on community, service now community. And the link to the article is in the description of this video. So let's get started. Now, what I have done is I have created uh, two custom actions and I have created two flows. So this is my first flow where you can see first i'm using create remote incident uh, action which is out of the box with e-bonding then i have copy of lookup remote incident uh, now what why i have done a copy of lookup remote incident is because i wanted to fetch sys id of the remote incident when i say remote incident which means the sys id of the incident which is in the destination environment why I need that? Because here, when I want to send the attachment, I need that sys ID of the lookup incident. And to edit this particular action out of the box, it is called as lookup remote incident action. I have already shown in my previous video that how to edit uh, this out of the box actions and how to bring extra additional fields from the remote instance to the source instance. So I have edited this, and then I have created a custom action called as sending attachment using e-bonding. So what I'm doing here is like this. So inputs, you can see the reference, the glide record of the current incident in the table. Then I'm sending remote table name. So in this case, it will be incident. This is generic. If you want to send it to change, you can also do that. Then this one is remote table sys ID where the sys id uh, which we are fetching in the copy lookup incident copy of lookup remote incident i'm passing that sys id here this is the sys id again of the remote uh, incident which is in the destination environment and this is the attachment sys id in the current instance which we have to transfer then here you can see i'm getting the file name i'm getting the content and the output of this particular uh, step is the content type and the file name which I need to send. Then in this REST call, you can see what I'm doing. I am using a table API for attachment. I'm posting the attachment. Here you can see I'm sending the query parameters with table name, sys ID, and the file name. The content type, which we have extracted in step one, I'm passing it here. And here I'm passing it as a binary. So automatically the request will be transferred to the destination environment in a binary format. And once that is done, we are checking if it was successful or if it was not. So let's see how it will work. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to, let's say I'm going to activate this flow. The condition is whenever the incident is created uh, at the time of creation, we are going to attach some attachments. We are going to also put the assignment group as software so that this will work. Uh, meanwhile, once this is getting loaded, I will show you my destination environment. So this is my destination environment. Here you can see the latest number at the moment is 1055. When we transfer, it should be 10156. This is saved. Now I'm going to go and create a new incident. And by the way, this works in both the environments like the same flow I, I will be creating in my destination environment so if 
the person adds attachment in the destination environment it will flow to the source environment now why we do this is because the in many companies there are multiple vendors which supports your service and they have their own service now instance we have our client has their own service now instance so they don't want client does not want to give access to all the users from the vendors into our service now instance so what we do is we do the e-bonding we transfer the incident creation and the details to their instance and the update flows between both the incidents until it is not closed that is actually the motivation to this particular article and videos so let's say i will be doing this attachment flow i will select this i will say software i will attach few things i have test files for example this one this one Okay, I have attached this file for example, and I'm going to save this. So as soon as I save this, I will go to the flow context, which will get triggered. So you can see, uh, I will go to the executions. So here you can see it is queued now, triggered just now. I will open this, let it run. <clears throat> Let's see if the incident is created in the destination environment. This is my destination environment. I'm going to reload this. You can see the incident is automatically created now, the attachment flow. I'm going to open it. Once I open it, you will see that this is created by my Freshdisk incident uh, user, which I have used. Attachment is properly transferred. All the details are properly transferred. You can also see the correlation ID. Now this incident correlation ID is the incident number from the source instance, which I'm going to show you here. So I will reload this and you can see this is our one double zero double one is our source incident and if i reload this you can also see the correlation id 156 from the remote instance is also updated here now coming back to the flow context you can see the incident was created this was the source incident number this was the destination incident number that is remote instance incident number here you can see i am fetching few extra details out of the box this ID is not fetched from the remote instance, but I have extended this uh, spoke to get or to uh, or action to get the sys ID, which is explained in my second use case. This is the sys ID which we are passing, uh, which we are passing to this particular action. Here you can see I'm passing the sys ID, and here here why we are doing lookup of records because one incident can have multiple attachments attached to it while creation. So we have to loop through the record. So if you see here, we need to loop through the records. If there are three attachments, it will go into this for loop for three times. If there is only one, it will go one time. And every time it goes into this, it will send, you can see here, it will send a new, you can see at the moment it is only one. It will always send the new sys ID of the incident and the attachment for which, uh, sorry, the sys ID of the remote incident will remain the same but the sys id of the attachment will always change and then you see 201 so this was when you create the incident like when you create the incident and when you attach the attachments to it then the incident is e-bonded along with the attachments now let's assume that the incident was already created so for example i will open another incident let's say mm, uh, i'm going to use this incident which is already e-bonded you can see it is already e-bonded no attachments if now i attach an attachment to this it should also flow to my destination environment and for that reason i'm going to attach this one oh yeah well is not permitted then let's use something else let's use this as soon as the attachment is attached this attachment should flow to this particular correlation uh, or incident in my destination environment i'm going to go to my destination environment open all the open that incident i'm going to put it like this you can see it and now once i open this you will see the attachment is already attached and it is e-bonded at now just now you can see 
Now for this, what I have done is I have created one new flow that is update flow. The trigger condition is whenever there is an attachment added in an attachment table, we are going to trigger this flow. You can see the table name and only when the table name is incident. After that, we are, have created one custom action which checks um, for the correlation ID if the incident is already e-bonded or not because we don't want to go and do the rest calls here for each and every uh, attachment which is added. I only want to do the rest call if the uh, correlation ID exists. So for that reason, it is again simple custom action I have created where I am checking if the incident has a correlation ID or not. If it has a correlation ID, I am setting these three outputs. You can see mapped, which will give me true or false. Ticket ID, which will give me the correlation ID because why I need correlation ID, I will show you that. And then the incident GR. Going back to the flow, which I have created, then the out here I'm checking if it is mapped. If it is true, then we go and again, we bring the sys ID of that particular incident from the remote instance. And that was the reason why we need correlation ID here. So in this, the output of this tape uh, or action one, because I need to pass here, you, you can see I'm passing the correlation ID. I can also do like, I can also pass the correlation ID from incident GR and then walk out to the correlation ID field. So you can reduce that one step. I have included it for testing purpose. And then again, using the same uh, same thing, send attachment using e-bonding. Now here there is no for loop because for each inserted attachment, this flow will trigger. And then it will send the attachment from source instance to destination instance. The same flows, you can take an XML of these flows in an update set, put this update set to the destination environment, in, commit the update set and both the instances will be in sync for the attachments. So this was kind of a small mini project which we did along with e-bonding spokes to send attachments and to create incidents uh, from one instance to another instance. Now, um, if you have any doubts, please drop comments into my article or on my video. Again, I will repeat that I will be attaching these flows and custom actions to my article, to my uh, video, there will be a link to the article so you can download it, you can start using it. If you have any doubts, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video.